Hi, this is Mike Callahan, Dr. Filefinder, and welcome to your Butterscotch Ham tutorial on how to use Windows Firewall. So in Windows, I click Start, go up to Settings, cross the Control Panel, and click on that. Now when it opens up, we'll scroll down. Here's the Windows Firewall, a little brick wall in front of the Earth. We'll pull that down so you can see it. Now there's three tabs. On the General tab, you want to make sure that the firewall is on. The only time you turn this off is if you're using some other firewall software, but you absolutely should be using firewall software if you're going to be on the internet. Here you can turn it off, not recommended. And allowing exceptions is probably something most of you will never have to do to say don't allow exceptions. This is done more on public networks like in airports. On the exceptions tab are exceptions that are allowed to cross the firewall like FTP client printer and file sharing, oh, remote desktop, Skype, Yahoo Messenger, and so on. You can add a program by clicking Add. It'll bring up a list of programs. You can select that and continue. You can add a port. So for example, you have a program that says it needs to use port 521. Well, you can go in here, give it a name, Put in, I will say 522. Port 522, decide whether it's TCP or UDP, and I'll talk about those in another tutorial. Click OK. So now we've added that one. You can edit the listings in here. I don't suggest it, like changing the scope, talks about the different ports and so on. You don't want to really fiddle around with those. Most programs that are going to use and go through the firewall have the port specifically configured because it's an exact number. It isn't something you just guess at. And then if you want to get rid of a listing that's in there, you can just highlight it and click delete. You'll find that some listings in there are protected and can't be deleted. And then lastly, there's the advanced tab. Most people won't need to use this tab at all. This talks about your network connection settings, security logging, default settings, and so on. So we're done here, we'll click OK, we'll close out a control panel, and that's all there is to it.